I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It is good to be with you here in this space and also uh, in other spaces as you view this online. I want to read to you from a couple of texts in the New Testament about love, because that's the fourth candle that we're going to light today is candle of love. So one of the premier chapters about love is the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And I just want to read the, the middle part of it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, rather rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And then from 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 7, beginning. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son as an, an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one's ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is made complete in us. So we started with peace uh, this year, then we went to hope, then we went to, we started out with, let me think, I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up here. <laughs> We're on love this week, I know that. <laughs> so, peace, hope, and joy, thank you. <laughs> and then love. That was last week, that's over. Um, so we teach with the Advent wreath. The center candle is the Christ candle, and we'll get to light that next week. We'll light it on Christmas Eve as well, but then uh, we'll also light it next Sunday for our service as well. All right, so... Uh, Got a couple more Chris Mons. Chris, the Chris Mons that I'm going to talk about this morning are first the dove. In Luke 3, 21 through 22, Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, and the Spirit of God descends upon Jesus in the form of the dove. This is why the dove, Chris Mons, points downward. A voice from heaven is heard saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Because the spirit of God appeared in the form of a dove, we use the dove as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. As a symbol of the Holy Spirit, this Christmas is also a reminder to us that the Holy Spirit lives inside all believers. In John 14, 26, Jesus told the disciples that after he was gone, he would send them a helper. He said that the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I <clears throat> have said to you. The Cairo, there's the dove, and here's the Cairo, which you can't see from back there, um, is a symbol that looks like it's been formed from the letters X and P of the English alphabet, but they're actually Greek. The letters chi and rho look pretty similar to the English X and P. They are the first two letters of the Greek name for Christ. The Cairo symbol is not mentioned in the Holy Bible, however, even though these letters are used to form the name of Christ in Greek. For centuries, Christians have used the Cairo symbol to represent Christ and Christianity. 
Now, if everyone will stand, and we'll sing together hymn number 100, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout. Now uh, we'll take some time for uh, joys and concerns. I'd like to start off this morning, um, first of all, with the joy of the giving of our church uh, congregation on the socks for my house. We ended up with six, am I right? White trash bags full of socks that were delivered to my house this week. So uh, what a blessing to the young folks that are out there and, and can use those socks. 
And the second one that I would like to read to you, uh, Bonnie isn't here with us this morning, but she asked that uh, we uh, pray for her daughter, Chris, and her husband, Mitch, as they will have to make some difficult decisions after the stunning news that her last MRI found a very small tumor in the right side of her brain. They won't know until this week what treatment will be possible, likely surgery, radiation, and chemo. They were shocked since she had been doing so well. So we need to continue to lift Chris and, and Mitch up in prayer, the medical staff, and especially Bonnie. This is a very, very hard time for her. Are there any other prayer concerns this morning? Yes, Helen. Uh, Irene Irwin, who an uh, elderly member of our congregation, took a fall last week and broke several ribs, was about ready to be transferred to Maple Springs, and um, has now got COVID, so she's having to stay at the hospital longer and what have you. So we need to keep her in prayers for healing of the, the rib injury and healing from COVID. And, yes, Gary. <laughs> yes, uh, as we all know, we had a bit of snow this, this last week, and Gary is asking, giving thanks and praise for all of those, the uh, MEA crews that have kept the power on, uh, those that are out clearing roads and driveways and, and what have you to make it so that we're able to get in and out of our driveways and get where we need to be. Uh, what a blessing to have those folks that are so so dedicated to their jobs. Anyone else? Yes, Marianne. Okay, Marianne is asking for prayers for our country uh, as, as we go through very hard times right now. Yes, anyone else? Yes, Meg. Yes. Uh, Prayers for Benjamin McIntyre as he travels back to be with his family and uh, for his mom's heart surgery, for the, the uh, medical staff, and, and that the surgery goes well. Yes, Lois. Okay, uh, Lois's prayer is a gratitude for Liz and Carrie, neighbors that are, are there for her always, and her concern for those that don't have neighbors like Liz and Carrie. Any, any other prayers? Yes, Suzanne. Okay, 
uh, Suzanne is grateful to be back with the congregation here in the church, and we're grateful to have her and Jerry back with us, and uh, prayers for those that are out of work and uh, struggling to find child care. Yes, Winston. To Rod's sister-in-law? Okay. Um, Rod, uh, Vicki and Rod, both of them are outside caring for parents, mothers right now, and his sister-in-law is going in for surgery this week. Vicki's been taking care of her mother. Right, Vicki's caring for her mother, Rod's caring for his mother, and now Rod's sister-in-law is going in for surgery. Okay, they have, they have gotten Rod's mother placed in, into a home now and are in the process of getting Vicki's mother placed. So. Yeah. Okay, they're hoping to be back sometime in January and we're all hoping for that as well. So for Rod's sister-in-law for su successful surgery and just... Uh, continued prayers for them as they have had to <clears throat> deal with so much with their mothers and, and getting in, into, into homes that they feel comfortable coming back up here and leading them. Any other prayers? Yes, Lori. <laughs> yes, Lori's asking for prayers for all of those that are still snowed in. Uh, not everyone is as fortunate as us that we're able to get here this morning. <laughs> so we'll keep all of those that are snowed in, in in our prayers as well. Okay. <sighs> Dear Lord, you have heard the prayers that uh, have been brought to you this morning. We lift Bonnie and, and Chris and Mitch up to you in prayer, and we just pray that the medical staff can give them some some good answers, and we ask that you work with them as they make the decisions, the hard decisions that they're going to have to make. If we lift Irene Irwin up to you, uh, that she'll heal quickly from the broken ribs, that the, the COVID will be mild, and she'll be able to move on to Maple Springs and then on to her home again. We give thanks, Lord, with the snowstorms that we've had this week, the, the folks that have been out there to make sure that we have electricity, that our driveways and roads are clear so that we can travel safely to the places that we need to go. Lord, we just lift all of these people up to you and give thanks for them. And Lord, you know that our country is in need of prayer. And we just lift it up to you and pray constantly. We pray for Benjamin and all of the others that are traveling during this holiday season. Lord, give Benjamin safe travels to his family and be with his mother as she goes through surgery. Be with the, the medical staff and give her healing. Lord, thank you so much for neighbors like Liz and Carrie, those that are there constantly taking care of your ne the needs of those close to them. And we pray for those that don't have neighbors that are there for them, that there will be people that see their needs and can help. Lord, we're so grateful to have Suzanne and Jerry back with us. We miss their smiling faces when they aren't here. And Lord, we just ask that you'll look out for those folks that are out of work, help them to find jobs, and help them to find child care so they can work. Lord, you know that we pray for Vicki and Rod constantly. We miss them when they're not here with us, and we know how hard it's been for them to be down there 
trying to find a safe place for their mothers so that they can come back to Alaska and feel comfortable. We just ask that you be with them as they make these decisions. Be with Rod's sister-in-law as she goes through surgery this week. And Lord, we pray for speedy recovery. Even though so many of us were able to make it out today, Lord, there are still so many that are snowed in, that are unable to get out. And we just ask you to be with them and give them peace. As we repeat the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you'll take some time to stand up and welcome those around you. Come back to your pews as a uh, fish begins to gather and sing. thought about it though I mean so it's okay so I'll go by another day
In the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, we're in the midst of Jesus' kind of farewell address. Really from the 13th chapter up to the 17th chapter, Jesus is with his disciples. It's just before he is um, arrested and uh, taken through the evenings of his passion, and he's crucified. He's kind of finished all his teaching sections, but he still has a lot to say to them. And so he speaks about uh, the Holy Spirit. He speaks about love. He speaks about being connected. And in the the latter part of the 15th chapter, we read this. This is verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. It's kind of one of the points of discipleship. We want to remain in Jesus Christ. We want to follow Jesus Christ. That's what those people wanted to do then. It's what we want to do now. We call him Lord and Savior. And so we want to know his mind. We want to know what he would do. We want to know how he would have us behave. It's very plain. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. Then they lay down their life for their friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. Rather, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love one another. Most of us know a good bit about love. Uh, I mean, we've got whole radio stations and movies and literature and all this kind of stuff that talks about love. But most of us have experienced love in some form or fashion. Many of us have experienced fantastic and wonderful brotherly love or romantic love or family love, all the different kinds. Most everyone has some experience with love. So when we talk about love, sometimes it gets old or sometimes we think we've heard it all. I want us to admit our need for love and for good information about love because we are at times obsessed with it. We're at times confused by it. We at times have perverted it, and then thankfully, there are plenty times where it is genuine and this amazing gift of God and this amazing practice, and we have spread it and offered it and multiplied it within our families and within our communities and within our churches. We know something about love, but it keeps coming back to that. (laughs) Hope and peace, joy, oh man, are they needed and they're great gifts. They follow up to love. So I want to talk about love for a little bit. There's different words for it. Some cultures have more than others. <clears throat> In the Bible, romantic love is talked about. Sexual love is talked about. Family and close-knit kin kind of love is talked about. The Bible talks about those, and we have songs and movies, and again, our own experience, both good and bad, that reminds us of those kinds of love. Right? If you listen to country stations, then you get... Broken love. (laughs) From everything from pickup trucks to hound dogs. There's two other kinds of love in the Bible that are spoken about, and and, and I want to call our attention back to those. The word in the Old Testament um, is often translated loving kindness, or it's everlasting love. Uh, It also has mercy. Uh, mixed in there because it's the love that a king gives to their subjects 
And the word that's often translated there as loving kindness is, if we try to spell it out in English, is hesed, H-E-S-E-D, you'll see, or sometimes you'll see it C-H-E-S-E-D, because it's actually, if you're going to pronounce it, it'd be chesed, <laughs> be a little guttural sound. But hesed is that everlasting, faithful, merciful love. It is the loving kindness that follows us in God's choice, in God's creation, and then in God's sustaining and redeeming and everlasting love. And again, mercy is an important aspect of it. God's love towards God's people, God's love towards you and I is hesed. It's kind of New Testament counterpart then is agape, Sometimes you'll hear it, agapo or agape, agape love. And again, it is that love which seeks the other's blessing in every circumstance. It is unconditional. It is fierce. It is a love that overcomes evil. It is a love which does not seek its own, but seeks the other's blessing. You take all of those sentiments that are wrapped up in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is kind. Love is not rude. Love does not keep a record of wrong. Love does not seek the wrong, but seeks the right. Then you're getting an agape love. And it is, it's, it's not only God's love that is agape. God shows this love to us, but it is very plain in the New Testament that it gets passed on through Christ to us. And so that when Peter is, uh, when, when Jesus is asking Peter, the risen Christ is asking Peter, on the beach, do you love me? He asked him, do you love me like a brother? But he also then says, do you love me agape? As God has loved me. The love of God is given and passed on, and now we are able to show that and to give that between us. Imperfectly, perhaps, (laughs) but it is given to us nonetheless to strive for and to share we understand love best when it's acted out right i mean that's why there's so much artwork and songs and sculptures and dramas and all of this kind of stuff is because we want to see it we want to see it acted out and when we talk about love in our own lives we tell stories we tell about aunt edna or about uncle joe we talk about our wives and our children talk about our families and about employees that we worked with or people that we knew in the army or people that we knew from our uh, baseball team who demonstrated love, who showed it in their actions and in the way they spent their time and money. Words, though powerful, are just not enough. They come up short. And so even God, as God spoke the final word, or God spoke the logos into being, that word became flesh and acted in history and became real to show us what love was like. Greater love hath no person than to lay down their life for another. And we know what love is. In this is love that Jesus came to be the overcoming or the atoning. It's the covering over of our sins, it says in 1 John. So we know love, and I've got uh, two or three things I want to punctuate with that. We know love, first of all, because of God's actions in the person of Jesus the Christ. We follow that pattern, and we lean in and rest in that grace. I have loved you as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Go and do that. As God has loved me, I now love you. Now you go and love the rest of humanity that way. We know love because God's love was shown to us in our creation. And perhaps one of the premier ideas within that is that we were created in the image of God. There's an old uh, Jewish tale or a Jewish oral in the Jewish oral tradition that goes something like this. 
God was finishing up on creation and he looked around at the, the court there in heaven and he said, there's only one thing that really left to create. We need to create a being who has intelligence and imagination and, and can, can honor and give glory to this creation and to us. Well, truth stepped up and said, God, be careful. <laughs> you don't want to create something that maybe you could like tell a lie. Or uh, make something up because it's not going to go well. And peace comes up and says, God, be careful. What if, this, what if this creature can take revenge or initiate war? And they started an argument about how this creature should be created and how much freedom and how much will this creature should have. And then in the midst of that, Small voice of charity, love, speaks up and says, God, I know that a creature created in your image will be able to do amazing things, will be able to be kind and generous, will be able to be loving and merciful. And so I think you should go right ahead. The story goes that God listened to truth and God listened to peace. But it was out of charity that creation occurred. So moving from an old Jewish folktale to Star Trek. Hope you didn't get left at the corner there. <laughs> I like science fiction and Star Trek has done this many, many times. But other, other science fiction movies do this same plot line. We're out there in the universe and we're traveling around and we run into a race that's far superior than we are in every way and they look at us as kind of primitive and so they start to wonder, well, what good are we? Should humans even exist? I mean, look at them. They lie. They cheat. They cause war. They do all this nasty stuff. They kill one another. <gasps> Why should we leave them alive? And then there's some kind of contest and good old Captain Kirk shows his best nature usually after a fist fight. <laughs> and they finally leave humans alone because they have this potential of goodness. They have this potential. They may be primitive now, but they're going to grow. They, can, they have this better nature that they can appeal to, this higher form of generosity and love and, and mercy. Well, Star Trek never names that, and most of the other science fiction doesn't know where that comes from they just hope that we have it but I want to tell you I know where it comes from <laughs> we're created in the image of God and God reveals mercy and God reveals loving kindness and God is those things and you and I are made in that image and those things can be revealed in our nature as well as we strive for godliness that potential for God's love. We also know love because we're part of the body of Christ. There was a father who would read uh, bedtime stories and, and scripture verses and Bible stories to his daughter. And they just finished for the evening and the daughter looks up at the father and says, Well, what, uh, what's your favorite Bible verse? And the father thinks for a minute and says, well, I, I like the one that we just did tonight, that passage from the second chapter of Mark, verses 1 through 12, where it talks about the four friends that brought their, their friend to Jesus so that he could be healed. And I like that story because it reminds me of your uncle Hans and his healing. The daughter, knowing that she had to go to bed, said, well, I don't know that story. <laughs> Tell it to me said, well, Hans and his wife Enid came over from Europe years and years and years ago. And they came to teach at a seminary, but it was hard for them because their language, language was a barrier and he didn't speak English very well. But pretty quickly and over time, he became a most beloved professor at this seminary. And part of it was because of he and Enid's relationship, they could be seen walking together and holding hands and, and sitting together and enjoying one another's company in the chapel. And the, the campus just really treasured this professor and his wife, Hans and Enid. 
Enid passes away. She dies. And Han takes, Hans takes it hard. It really sends him into what some theologians call a dark night of the soul. So he's meeting with friends and, and speaking with them, and they're trying to cheer him up. They're going over to visit with him and, and try to prop him up and cheer him up. And he says, you know, I, I, I need some help. I, I'm not, I can't pray anymore. I'm not even sure I believe in God anymore. This shocked his friends. They were quiet for a moment. Seminary president, who was one of the friends, says, all right, we'll pray for you. We'll believe for you while you're in the midst of this time. And the other friends looked around and said, well, what's he talking about? So they met, and they began meeting daily, and they would pray for Hans. They would pray for God to restore faith. This went on for months, several months. And then one day, all of them were meeting again. Hans included was meeting with, his, with these four friends who had been meeting every day and praying for him. And he says, thank you. You no longer need to pray for me. I would like for you to pray with me today. My faith has been restored. The daughter looks up at her father and says, oh, Hans was like the guy on the pallet that his four friends took to Jesus to be healed. Good job. God gave us to be connected and supported in families and churches and communities. And it is one of the major ways that we understand God's love is the love that we show one another. We were created in love. We are sustained by love. And we are meant to share and practice that love with others. So this season and on into the new year, into the future, be the love that others will see and that others will comment on and others will come to know. You can think and reflect on who has done that for you and you can think and reflect on who you need to do that with maybe over the next few days and weeks. Again, Jesus said, as God has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. Let us pray. Lord, help us to put away the excuses and put away the reasons not to love. Help us to put away that sin which clings so closely and merely love. Help us to rest and feel and be embraced by your love that we may share that with those close by, with those far away, with even our enemies and those with whom we disagree. Let us show love, for it is your character and it is the image in which we are created and live. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we would like to thank everyone for their generous uh, tithes and offerings and giving to the church. We don't pass our uh, offering plates at this time. We have them in the back of the sanctuary. And for those of you that are worshiping with us from home, uh, you can either uh, mail a check to the church or you can uh, go to our website and... Uh, and give through the uh, app on the website. 
We are taking the joy offering right now, and Henry has talked to you about what that is for. It's a PCUSA offering. There are envelopes in your bulletins that you received this morning if you'd like to uh, give to the joy offering. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our strength and song, filling our hearts with delight. May we make our offerings to you gladly and joyfully. Everything we have is yours, and we are delighted to return part of your generous gifts to you. Bless our tithes and offerings today. Let the Father's greatness be the light that leads us, the Son's compassion be the love that inspires us, and the Spirit's present be the force that empowers us. Amen. And now, if you take some time while Caroline is playing and just uh, meditate and think about what Henry has had to say to us this morning about love. Him is number 110, Love Has Come.
couple things real quick before Shirley uh, gives us a good word. Um, there is fellowship time downstairs, and there's birthday cake. So come on downstairs for a few minutes. Uh, also, Christmas caroling today. We're going to leave here about noon. We're going to go to a couple of uh, homes, uh, uh, Primrose and Maple Springs, and maybe some other homes. Um, you're welcome to join us for that. This coming Wednesday night, is Logos, the last one of the year, and would love to have you come and join us. Carrie is cooking, and he told me that he can cook for hundreds. <laughs> so, y'all come. We're gonna exchange. We're gonna have some gifts exchange. We're gonna uh, put the nativity play together. We're gonna do all that in an hour and a half. So, come and come and join us on Wednesday night, and then uh, Christmas Eve services for us here, five o'clock on uh, Saturday and 11 o'clock on Saturday, and then back here Sunday morning. Thank you. Be people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Share love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for the world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share love, joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. Our service to the world in the name of Jesus Christ now begins. <laughs> 